This Q&A video is brought to you by j -Hap Gear. Life's a crusade. Dress appropriately. And we are live. Questions kept rolling. You've got a dead rag on your head. Okay. Scoot over a bit. A little more. Da -ba -da -ba. Why do we have a grenade? Because I put it there. Why not? Want to play hot potato? Never sure. enough grenades. All right. Welcome to Q&A episode 12. This is the video series where you, the viewers, ask questions in the comment section down below. And if we like them, we cut them up, throw them into our question and ammo box. We are kindly reminded by our subscribers that we forgot last episode, I think it was 10. We did, last episode was episode 11. 10, we forgot it, didn't we? You were with us with JoJo, right? Oh yeah, we forgot to upload that one, didn't we? No, we uploaded that. Did we upload it? Anyway, doesn't matter. So, this will be tar the part 12. Oh, wait, so, so we're not going to do part 10 now? And we did part 10. Damn it. Let's start us over. We start. We did ten. We forgot the name in ten. We did eleven. Oh. <laughs> Last. See, I, I wasn't even here, and I know that. Yes. Yeah. See. See. All right. Let's start it off. I'll go first. First question of the day comes to us from S T S Airsoft, and they ask. They ask. Do you prefer multicam or classic woodland camo, like your backdrop, like this kind of color? Personally, I prefer mul um, woodland. Not. I do not. I'm not a huge fan of multicam. Um, it's not a bad camo pattern, I just find it does not blend in as well as woodland for where we play. Multicam blends in extremely well in like desert slash slightly wooded areas, kind of like, say some perfect example would be Afghanistan. It's all very dusty, very sandy, it's got a little shrubbery and everything. That would be where it blends in very well. However, we play, it's like 99% woodland, mm -hmm. which is where this sort of pattern. Get stuck in exactly. All kinds of fun so stuff. for our area, I'm not the biggest fan of multicam. Nick, I, no multicam. Not only does it look kind of barfy, <laughs> it doesn't blend into anything here in Florida. But like Matt said, I mean it has its uses. Just we don't use it. Then we said there's we have a, used it once. We have. It's Just like once. for the designating teams yeah. mainly, but. They had this actually cool chart on Instagram. I saw they have like a whole map of the U.S. and it was colored in different areas where like different camera patterns were used, and it's really popular. Like I said, it's really popular in like Nevada, California, um, those kind of westernish states, and then here on the eastern side you got Marpat, Woodland, all those mm -hmm. fun camera colors that blend in over here. What's your take? Yeah, well, pretty much exactly the same. I've uh, never liked multicam particularly. I think it's just the whole way they blended the colors and stuff. It just doesn't really work. I don't know. It's just, it's not my style. I'm definitely for Marpat. I'm definitely for the logical purpose of using the camouflage pattern that blends in with uh, the woodland around me. So, if I were in California, maybe I'd lean towards multi-cam, even though I don't like the color necessarily, but the good thing about being in Florida is, is that Marpat is what we use. Marpat woodland works yeah, best here. Works best here, and it looks pretty sick, so. Alright. Next question, moving right along. We'll have Nick go. It's my turn. <laughs> This one comes from Big C. What do you prefer, blowback or non-blowback? That's a good question. Are we talking about AEGs or gas blowbacks? Uh, I'm assuming... I don't know. I, well, my blowback. personal opinion, any blowback gun, mm -hmm. any blowback equals cool, okay? Yes. That's a good point. Specifically for pistols. Yes, definitely. If your pistol sure. is not blowback, it's, it's a... It, there's, you have that really good CO2 pistol that's well, not, it's not I, blowback, yeah, but, but I have a CO2 it's really good. USP, and even though it's not blowback, well, that's one of the things that it won't fail on is it, with works and stuff, because you have to oil uh, blowback pistols and stuff like that, and you have to keep up on them. But a non-blowback CO2 pistol, for example, is the, is the uh, CO2 pistol that you cannot worry about at all. And so that's why well, I bought one originally a while back, and even though I'm looking into getting a blowback pistol now, that pistol is so extremely durable that, like, it's just, I don't even worry about it at all. I can put 4,000 rounds through it and only clean it once or twice. I'm going to have to go towards blowback. Um, like you said, they do require maintenance and cleaning, but they're so much fun to shoot. The kick, the recoil, the realism behind it is so much better, and it's worth just a lube every now and then. And I haven't really had that much um, reliability issues with uh, blowback guns, including AEGs. Um, the only thing about AEGs is if the rate of fire is really high, I don't like to have blowback because the blowback feature doesn't always keep up with the cycling. Not not necessarily always, but sometimes it does have an issue. So, um, but for the most part, like G and G Raiders, the blowback on those that's pretty legit. 
Nick, what do you think? For rifles, I think gas blowback down here just doesn't work because it's so nasty. That stuff gets just... I, I keep seeing people with broken gas blowback rifles. The AG blowback rifles, they're cool. My Raider, which I still use, has a blowback, and that's really cool. So, mm, blowback pistols, though, always have to have a blowback pistol. I guess pistol. it varies from person to person with... Like, I really have not had any problems with blowback in the general sense with my pistols. I haven't really owned a blowback rifle, gas blowback rifle, but... No, WE, on the other hand, is not a blowback pistol that I would suggest. Any, anything by WE. Nick knows the, the struggle. WE is interesting. They can be either be really good or really bad. <laughs> it's like you get one or the other. And I got really bad. And he got one of the more... The animals. barrel literally fell out. <laughs> just fell out of my 1911. All right, well, let's move on here. Nick, I... Well, Nick just went. It's your turn. Yeah, yeah. my name's Daniel. Michael. No, I said I was going to say Nick just went. Yeah, 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 carry on, carry on. Um, okay, Bryce Amorosi says, Hey guys, what type of optic scope would you recommend best? Sincerely, Fox Hound Airsoft. Oh, I know this guy. Well, I don't really know him, but he likes a lot of my pictures on Instagram. <laughs> okay, so, um, my favorite optic. Well, it depends on the use I yeah. have for it. Um, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna split it up into three classes for use of optics and I'm going to leave handguns out considering the only people that really use optics for handguns are either those cool mini red dots on like the F, F and Herstal um, pistols, the 45, yeah, 45 or, Calvary, yeah. or the sporting event uh, shooting and stuff like that. But Okay, so for rifles, I prefer to have, um, if it's a longer rifle like a DMR, which I run, I have a scope. Um, my scope is a uh, Benelli, I believe it's Benelli. And it's adjustable. I've, it's got a one to nine, and it, one to nine, and it's a nine by forty by thirty-five or something. It's, and it's a wide-angle scope to where I can see a lot of area through the scope. Okay. Um, there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so basically, on a longer rifle, I would prefer a scope. It's a lot of fun to use them. Um, on a regular rifle, like a uh, just a standard M4 carbine or something like that, I would Those use a red dot. Uh, well, red Neo dot Tech. or Neo Tech. Yeah, as I said, yeah. Red Dot is technically Neo Tech. Well, it's a hollow. Te a hollow technically, well, for airsoft, it is. Technicalities are against. Yeah, anyway, yeah. yes, I would go with an Neo Tech because they have a good, they have a good uh, uh, visual uh, spectrum to be able to see through and everything else. So, yeah. um, and the Neo Techs are very durable and reliable, mm -hmm. especially the clones um, compared to other Red Dots ones. and stuff. Yep. Yeah. All right, and I'll second Daniel's motion. Um, Long range engagements with DMRs and stuff, you're going to want to go with something magnified uh, for closer range, or your, maybe your gun's not shooting that hot, like not for design for long range. Go keep it the red dot, a little EOTech, China clone EOTechs. Everyone asks about that. Don't get the real ones because they're like $400, $500, mm -hmm. depending on what you get. Get the clones, so they're like cheaper. Okay? Like 80 That's what bucks, we get. Like 100 80 bucks, bucks 100 bucks. The same as you get for like an airsoft optic, something like that, depending on what you get. Nick? I like the EOTechs. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Because, yeah, I like well, the text. next question. Not, not quite, because <laughs> the scopes, they're great and everything, but it's airsoft. And yeah, How that far is a good are point. you actually going to be shooting? Whereas the, the open the holographic sites, you can, you can see and everything, and you're not reaching out that far. So just, unless you have a polar star, then you can do what you want. Yeah, well, see, that, my gun shoots just about as far as a polar star. That's debatable. It, it, it does. It really does. I don't. I've been shot by numerous polar stars that I thought were within my range, but they weren't. Anyway, carrying on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So next question comes to us from Andrew Thompson. Hey, I was wondering what kind of chest rig is that Matt? What I think he means to say, hey, I was wondering what kind of chest rig Matt wears. It looks badass. Thank you. I wear currently a Condor MO. MOPC stands for Modular Operator Plate Carrier. It's just your standard run-of-the-mill plate carrier. It's kind of like the, I think it's considered to be one of the starter kind of a plate carrier. It's like the base plate carrier. It's just like normal size, medium, kind of contoured. It fits a large range of people. It's not too, it's not like a big, not like a, a really small, tight one. It's not like a gigantic one that like goes all the way down to your hip. It's just Middle of the road, standardized play carrier. I really like the thing. It's kind of what I was looking for, so I could really build off of it. I like a lot of pouches and different uh, accessories to put on and everything like that. But yeah, Condor Mo PC, OD Green, obviously, because not doing OD Green. 
Why would else would we be doing anything else? I'm just going to do a black one next time. That's what I might do in the future, so I'm going to do a black loadout for CQB. Cause I'm gonna yeah, that actually sounds... Then. Yeah, if we did like a SWAT loadout. Exactly. Oh, you know what I should... I want to wear like a suit or something. A suit? Anybody play CQB? Just a hit man. 245. Suit. Let's do yeah. this. Alright, Nick? Noble Drama. Druma. Drama. I... Druma. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Are holographic sites really worth the extreme price? Now, we just kind of went over that. Yeah. Don't get real holographic yeah, sites no. for an airsoft no. gun, because your life is going to suck yeah. when it hits with a BB and it cracks. Sure. I think the real ones are a little more reinforced. I Still. think. I don't really know. I mean, unless you, ha unless you like own three Lambos and you just want to just drop some money on anything you see, if you're then, I can, then I would sympathize with getting a real EOTech. <laughs> but at that point, I'd be using that real EOTech on a real gun, yeah. not airsoft guns. I can basically never see a scenario where you'd use China clones. a real EOTech on an airsoft gun. Yeah, go with the China clones. They're kind of hard to find, so you do have to do a little research yourself. Sometimes Usually it's Amazon. the second or third page back on Google. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Amazon sometimes has them. eBay is probably a good option to go to, maybe get some used ones. Um, they're very hard to find, but if you do find them, make sure you like hold on to them and don't sell them because they're not, they're not an easy thing to come around. But they right. are very good. They are extremely very worth it. Right. Just yeah. not six hundred dollars. No, yeah, not the real one. Well, I basically gave my opinion, but yeah, um, definitely you want to go with the clone over right. the real thing. Definitely. Question. Your turn, I think. Right. Did you go? With me? Yes, I just went. Yeah. Oh, that was, <laughs> that was this question. <laughs> okay. Slovenek. Um, he is Slovenian, which oh. is cool. I have friends Slovenian. Slovenian. Okay, anyway, um... <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway. Um, I have a question. What you? What do you prefer if you need to pick? M4 or AK mm. and why? Uh, so, yeah. We're supposed to answer this in, like, a minute? Yeah, this, this is... We have, this like, is an, five... We, have, we can do five minutes. This is an age-old debate. This is the age-old debate. M4 versus AK-47. Now, for real steel... I'm sure all his... endless debate. For real steel. For real steel. AK-47 has a larger bullet, has more stopping power, it penetrates more than an AR-15 round. I think they weigh... no, the AR-15 is lighter than an AK. Um, the AK-47 is easily, like, ten times more reliable than an AR-15. You cannot jam an AK-47. I probably have yet to this day seen an AK-47 jam. I have not seen one. Someone will probably link a video below showing me an AK-47 jamming, but I have yet to see one. <laughs> so, we're about to. Basically, on the left side, AK, you have big bullet, massive stopping power, reliability, missing anything? That's about it, I think. AR-15 cool. AR side, you have better accuracy, lightweight, and I, the ammunition is easier to find than AK. This is for real steel, by the way. We'll get to airsoft in a second. Personally, on my hand, um... The reliability for me isn't going to be a huge issue in terms of um, what I do for shooting. If I was saying I ran out to the woods for a survival rifle or something, easily AK-47, okay? Because you're going to be throwing that thing around the dirt, it's going to be getting all dirted up and everything, just whatever. If you're like saying jumping in and out of vehicles, out of a car, or maybe you're driving somewhere, you're holding down a fort or something, AR-15, because it's that kind of that long range, accuracy and precision, they're lightweight, easy to maneuver. But, like you said, they just can't really hold up with the AK when it really comes down to that throwing it around in the dirt and all that rugged reliability that that AK can take. Okay. Yeah, um, basically, AK-47 is a strong Russian gun. Strong Russian weapon. Very strong. It's guided by the hand of stone every bullet is fired. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that doesn't sound very patriotic right now, Nick. No, um, no it's totally unpatriotic. <laughs> I had, to, I had to throw in a little bit for good old Stalin. He's probably asking a little bit about the airsoft. Yeah, probably. Well, let's, let's go yeah, over that real yeah. quick. Okay, yeah. So for ahead. airsoft, um, generally in airsoft, all guns pretty much perform the same. They shoot the same round. They, there's no real reliability issue. Um, M4 uses a version 2 gearbox, which is their more common upgrade parts. Mm -hmm. Version 3 is what the AK uses now. It's a little less common, not much, just a little bit. So basically, they're basically the same in terms of upgradability. AK-47... I don't think it's as upgradable in terms of external attachments as the AR-15, because you can buy AR-15 can buy rails, um, grips, stocks, anything pretty much. AK-47 you still can, 
I just don't think it's as vast as the AR-15 yeah. options are. Um, in terms of um, what I like about the AR-15, I think it's the big factor that draws everyone to it is the magazines and everything you can do to them for airsoft. Like if your teammates are obviously probably going to be running AR-15s, your people you're playing with will be running with someone that's your team that will be playing with will be using probably a gun that runs on an M4 magazine. So you can like if you run out of ammo, toss me a magazine, good to go. AK-47 are a little less common, so you might not be able to run into another teammate if you come into a problem like my mag jammed or I need more ammo, you probably won't be able to, you have to take ammo out, speed load it, you know. Yeah, and that and the Milsim factor for uh, mm -hmm. M4s versus the AKs, most people uh, doing any type of Milsim event are going to want to uh, want to run an AR type platform yep. because, well first of all, you've got the weight factor, the AKs are generally heavier mm -hmm. than the M4s, especially if you get a higher quality one because they'll have the wood, wood furniture yeah. and stuff. Um, that and the magazines, for one, the AK-47 magazines are considerably a bit bigger than the M4 magazines. So they are. It'll be, that it'll is be heavier and it'll be more cumbersome um, to pack as many AK-47 rounds on your uh, on your person as much as you'd uh, put an AR or M4. The magazine magazine. also a little yeah. more awkward because they're kind of like a banana the, style. Yeah, the banana style and everything else. So that's why, like, if you see the Russian kits and everything else, they got these huge mag pouches for the... Yeah. AK-47 mags. It's just, uh, that's just one of the, that's just one I think of the downsides really, for the AKs. Yeah, not to interrupt, but I think it really all boils down to personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Personally, for me, I like the AR-15s. I think they just look cooler. I think for my needs, they perform better um, in terms of like what I'm going to do and what I'm going to use for them. Um, AK-47, they're a really good gun, really cool looking if you want to go for that unique look. You'll definitely be, that'd be one upside of using an AK, you'd be yeah. definitely unique because there's not a lot of them there are a lot, don't get me wrong, but they're not as common as an M4. Because you've everyone's heard that and they're just saying, Ugh, another M4. They made another one, <laughs> which is true every time. Like, introducing the new SR52163. Oh, it's an M4, basically, with a new rail and an optic and a weird stock. Okay, yeah. And a bigger price tag. Yeah, pretty much. Alright, um, anything you want to add to that, Nick, before we wrap this up? Or, that about it? I like scars. Scars from <laughs> All right, well, that about so wrap it up for the... Die. Oh, God, you and your scars. They always die. They're not that. Okay. Both of my... Airsoft right scars. Now. I think it's just bad luck, personally. But, anyway, that about wrap it up for the question portion of this Q&A video. It's now time for our personal Q&A shout-out. Dan, our take it away. Yeah. Our shout-out today is uh, for a loyal follower. His name or name on Instagram is FPH Shane Airsoft. That's FPH underscore Shane Airsoft. He's liked a ton of my pictures. He's liked a ton of Matt's pictures. Probably Nick too, but we don't know what happens with Nick's Instagram. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, um, thanks for all the likes, and uh, uh, so this is our thanks to you for being a loyal fan. Yep. Thank you. All right, guys, that about wrap it up for the Q and A session today. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to click the like button down below and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date for the most recent uploads and more Q and A videos such as this one. And as always, thanks for watching. That better not explode. <laughs>